one view no, who's one or that I admire? That you admire. Uh, why? For me, Charles Van Riper. Why? Because he was the first one that let me know that you could continue to stutter somewhat and have it solved reasonably well. I had thought and I'd had therapies that had tried to prevent the moments and all the rest and here was someone who said in effect and I read the book and then I met him in 1947 and I saw him off and on since then I did not receive the therapy actually but I was around him so much that he certainly had a, an influence on me and uh, he himself of course had been very severe and he was the first one that implied, he just said, you're going to stutter somewhat for the rest of your life, and you better learn how to do it efficiently. And uh, so I began to, to experiment and to do certain things that he said that uh, would probably lighten this up somewhat. And uh, I found that I could break up the ice field some, and I was continuing to stutter. and. All I know is it's possible to speak f fluently enough and stutter. You can be a fluent stutterer, and I prefer to say stutterer. I don't like the thing, a person who stutters. Yeah. To me, that is still not quite the way that I prefer to label myself, but that is a matter of semantics. And I also admired Wendell Johnson. He was in our home in San Francisco with his family in 1948. He had improved by then a lot. But I had learned from his old book, it was called Because I Stutter, which I think is the finest one that shows somebody what it's like to be at the bottom of the valley. And uh, that book was new in 1930. They only had maybe a few hundred issues of that, I believe and it went out fast, probably by 1931, it wasn't around anymore. But I have one of the books, and uh, he was very, very severe. And I also was lucky to get the masters under Lee Travis, who was the founder of the field. And when I was at USC, and I support USC all the way, that's my heart alma mater. Stanford happens to be the, uh, the BA one that I had the BA from, but you know whose side I'm on in the football game. Sure, sure. Uh, anyway, uh, I was there and they had the psychotherapy. That was the major thing then because he had shifted over, you know, from somebody who had supported the dominance and all that. And I went through 250 hours with him. And it did me some good, yes, yeah. with him. I'm the only one probably alive that had it directly from him. And uh, it helped me, sure. But for stuttering per se, I don't think much of it, because I still had the symptoms very much even after that. Uh, so I think it helped in some, you know, some other areas and so forth. It's hard to prove anything, but I had to work on it, had to work on it even after that a good bit. And then... I did say to him on, on the final hour that I had of this, and as I say, it was helpful. I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying I don't believe it is probably the major vehicle by which to recover. Uh, I said to him, I'll support you, but I support your 1931 book, not the 1957. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was too happy <laughs> to hear that then, but I observed that he shifted back to the old thing, and in his last writing, he died around 1986, and he wrote and said, in effect, this is centrally located, and it's uh, the therapies that we have available are dealing with the peripheral system, and he cited the person that had a club foot there was no real way to shift that too much itself because it was a physiological thing and that we could deal with it through the therapies that we have to learn to manage it better. That's what he said in the final article and went back to the old 1931 which I never have veered from and I'm very happy to see that the research that we have nowadays seems to reaffirm, I think it has been able to refine some of the things that they have found, had found in Iowa 
from those experiments with the instruments that they then had. This was in the 20s even. He was with Orton, of course. And uh, you're talking about you're still. This is Wendell Johnson. When, uh, no, well, he was there. No, you, Lee, Lee, Lee Travis. Travis, Travis I'm Travis, talking okay. about. Wendell arrived there in 1926, and absolutely speechless. And uh, he went through experiments. And if you read his book, because I stutter, you'll find that in the intro it will say that they went through the the experiments, and he himself had said when he spoke on the, quote, recovery panel, unquote, I should yeah. put to, of 1957, he said that he had tried to uh, shift his hand in this until he became a threat to his own thumbs, and he went through all kinds of experiments. And he really got a lot better when he was probably in his 40s, and he became head of the ASHA when he was around 50, he died when he was 59, and his uh, speech was very good for the last six years or so. It was hardly perceptible even. He'd have a few little sounds that sounded like anybody else. Time.